Hello, welcome back to my channel, a hello for the first time. How are you doing? You all right? I hope you're okay. We're a few weeks into this pandemic now and I think everyone's getting off his gunnet. If that's you, I'm right there with you. I hope you're all right and you're finding stuff to distract you. If you're looking for baking ideas to distract you, I'd suggest my other videos. If you just are here for an update on my IVF, then have a seat, have a coffee, chat with me. In saying that, <laughs> there's not a lot to update you on. I've had my surgery now, so this will be like the fourth IVF update video. So in the last one, number three, um, I talked about how I was just about to go for surgery on the 24th of March. So it is now the 17th of April. I had my surgery. Um, there was no complications at the time. Everything seemed fine. At the moment, because of the pandemic that's going on, hospitals and things, you're not really allowed anyone else in with you. So although I went to a private hospital, it's the same idea. If not, private hospitals are probably a little bit more stricter because they're private, so they rely on the the income. When I got to the hospital, um, I was taken to my room. Mark was told to leave the hospital, he wasn't allowed in. He had to sit in his car and I had to sit in the room on my own waiting for the surgery. So basically I, I sat and cried. <laughs> I sat and cried from about 12 till about 2 and then I was taken away in my, my snazzy gown, in my snazzy um, surgical socks, bright green surgical socks. I was taken away for surgery. Um, I don't know if you've ever had surgery before, but it was the weirdest, weirdest thing. So I've had surgery twice now in the same areas, um, sort of both gynaecological surgeries. First one was to find out what was going on and why I couldn't have kids. And the second one was this one. So the first one, this didn't happen, but the second time I woke up and I could not stop chittering. Like, like my teeth were, were shaking, like they were chittering, I couldn't stop. Um, and I wasn't cold, but you would think that I was like in the Arctic. I could not stop chittering and the guy just kept telling me to relax and that it was just something to do with the anaesthesia, but it was mental. And um, I was the most emotional person in the world because I think anaesthetic makes you super emotional. <laughs> so I just kept saying sorry to the lovely anaesthesia man who kept telling me to relax and stop saying sorry and I kept saying, I'm really, really sorry. <laughs> Um, then I was taken back to my room where I mostly slept until, until about half seven when a nurse came in and went, yeah, you're going to need to leave. And I was like, what? And so Marcus had to come out of his car, who had been sitting in his car from 12 o'clock that day to half seven at night. He came in, collected me. I was still absolutely blazing, like out my face. And he collected me, put me in the car, took me home and I slept some more. So, as I say, it's now the 17th of April when I'm recording this and um, I've been in and out of the hospital twice since then with a lot of pain. A lot, a lot of pain. TMI, so if you don't want to hear this, like, skip forward if you want. But I have had the worst pain ever. It feels like, it feels almost in the same area as where you'd have period pain, but it feels like it's on fire and I can't bend over, I can barely walk that easily. Um, I went, I tried to go a walk and I was knackered, like it was just too much. Getting up and like showering and stuff, even that much activity is so painful that I feel like my body's working overdrive to, to, to make up for it and I'm just exhausted. So, at this point, I am I'm pretty pissed off, I'll be honest, because I'm just sick of being sore. Like, I'm sick of it. I just want to feel normal. So the twice I went into the hospital in, the, in this pain was to get antibiotics and painkillers. Turns out that um, the first time I went in, they were like, oh, you've just got um, a UTI. I've never had a UTI in my life. And they're like, oh, you've got one of those. It's really common after the surgery. But I had no symptoms of a UTI. They just said that that's what the pain was. And I was like, okay. So I took that course of antibiotics, still in pain. So I phoned them back and I was like, I am still in a ton of pain. 
and we went to take paracetamol. <laughs> and I was like, I've been doing that. So I had to phone him back and said, I can't deal with this anymore. I can't, like, you need to tell me what's wrong. So he took me back in again and then had a wee poke in the jiggery and they said that there's an infection up where the, the tubes and things are. Basically where my tubes were, like, I keep doing this as if that's supposed to help me. Where my tubes were clipped, um, it's, my tubes aren't taking well to it. They're basically like, what is this? Get this off. So there's a lot of inflammation that's caused infection. So if you can imagine my fallopian tubes in my womb being swollen, being sore, and also being infected somehow, that's what I'm dealing with. So it's very, very painful. So I'm on very strong antibiotics and very strong painkillers and everything's sore. But if the antibiotics work and that goes away, then the pain should go away and then it should be normal. Some questions that I've been asked is, um, will I still have periods, even though they're being clipped? Yes, I will. Another question I was asked is, will it affect my menopause? Apparently not. I hope not, because that would fucking suck. Apparently, you just go on, life is normal. Obviously, once the pain subsides. Life is normal, you're just fully, 100% infertile. Cannot ever have kids naturally. I'm a negative Nancy. I always have a negative spin on everything before I have a positive spin on things. So that's why I married Marcus, because Marcus tries to have a positive spin on everything all the time. So what Marcus tends to tell me is I'm more fertile because before, if I had had IVF, there would have been a liquid that would have came in and killed the embryo. Whereas now, that liquid can't come in. So I'm more fertile than I was before. I like his logic, I like that way of thinking, it's very positive and nice, I just can't train my brain to do that. <laughs> so other than all of that surgical stuff and pain stuff, um, not much has changed. The, the clinic that we use in Glasgow is closed, much like all IVF clinics will be closed. So I've been emailing my clinic back and forward and they can't tell me a date on when they'll reopen, which is understandable because everything's up in the air and nobody knows when things will go back to normal. So, as far as I'm aware, they've basically told me to prepare for the start of next year. If they can do IVF before then, they will, but they're aiming for the start of next year. So that kind of sucks. Me and Marcus have been together for seven years in October, and we've been trying for a baby for four years, and to have to wait another year <laughs> kind of sucks but it is not the worst thing to happen in the world. The worst things have happened to see this virus and pandemic is crazy. People are losing everything to now. So I'm very lucky and I'm in a good position. So you just have to think positively. So in the meantime, all I'm gonna do is try and heal from the surgery, try and distract myself from the pandemic and being bored. And once I, I'm fully healed, I'm going to focus more on my health again because I'm starting to gain weight and I need to make my body a place where an embryo would want to live happily for nine months. So I'll do that and yeah, if anything ever changes I'll come back and I'll make a new video but there's nothing, nothing's probably going to change until the coronavirus and stuff goes away or calms down. I don't imagine I'll be making another IVF video for a couple of months. Yeah, I guess I'll see you in a couple of months. Thank you to everyone who watches these videos. I know they're a bit different compared to the other videos I do, seeing as the other videos all I do is open boxes of cute toys or Japanese sweets or bake cakes. This is way, way off the mark for everything else that I do, but I appreciate you being here and watching and listening and caring because a lot of you do care and a lot of you do want to know and that's really sweet and it really gets me through because a lot of the people who comment on these videos or message me have been through the same thing or are know people who are going through the same thing and it's very comforting, it's very nice. So I won't have it on, I've mentioned hundreds of times how I appreciate you, I really really do appreciate you. If you're going through something similar to me and you feel like you don't have anyone to talk to and you're struggling hit me a message either below in the comments or on my Instagram or my Twitter 
let me know and I'll add you, I'll DM you, we can talk, we can chat. If these videos can help people feel better about their situation then I am here for it and I am here for you. <laughs> so just message me. All is well. If I have anything right now it is an abundance of time. Can't leave the house so. I also have a discord and in that discord there's like wholesome memes and bacon and video games and all that kind of stuff and I'm greatly considering creating an IVF group as well in amongst all of that. So if that's something that you would feel like you would want to be involved in and you would want to join then please let me know in the comments below so that I know if it's worthwhile creating this IVF sort of chat log and chat room. Let me know. I'm away anyway. I'm going to go, I'm going to drink my coffee and I'm going to make carrot cake and I'm going to make vegan cupcakes. If only you could see the mess behind this camera. <laughs> that's messy. Okay, right, so thank you so much for coming and watching and chatting and I'll speak to you later. Bye!